Well, hi there. I'm here today in my frog green shirt with my awesome Australian green tree frog, also known as a white tree frog or dumpy frog, which is one of the best pet amphibians you could possibly get. And they are so great. The personality on these frogs is unreal. They are just so calm and complacent. They're, they're handleable for an amphibian. Now amphibians, none of them are ideal to handle, but this is as good as it gets and they will just sit there and hang out with you. They've got this face that is adorable. It looks the way you would imagine really cute aliens to look. Uh, they, it is a very alien looking face, but it is an adorable face. And like all tree frogs, they can climb straight up glass. And they've got these awesome toe pads. They're very different from what you see on a, on a gecko foot, um, but they get the job done. And this white tree frog comes to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is definitely a place you should check out if you're ever in the area. I love these guys, but are they the right pet reptile for you? Overall, we give the white tree frog a score of 3.8 out of 5, which is a pretty good score. We're going to break this down into our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, and this is pretty obvious when you see this frog just sitting here like this that it's going to be high, we give the white tree frog a score of 4 out of 5. Honestly, I was very tempted to give this frog a score of 5 out of 5 for handleability because, I mean, they couldn't get any easier to handle. They're not going to bite you. They're not going to scratch you. They're even generally not going to hop away. They're just going to hang out with you, and they would probably hang out with you like this all day long. They're not even very prone to stressing. The only reason they don't get a perfect score is really just because they are amphibians. And as amphibians, they have a skin that is very uh, permeable. And as a result, oils and other chemicals on your hands can get inside of the frog itself, which could cause them problems. So you want to make sure that your hands are extremely clean. And not only are they clean, but they're, they're pure. They're, they're, you've washed them You've washed off all soap, you've washed off any sort of chemicals, you've washed off as many of the oils from your hands as possible, and even then you want to keep handling to a minimum. So I would say, if you're going to handle them at all, which you don't have to, handle them sparingly. When it comes to care, we give the white tree frog a score of 3 out of 5. The care is very simple for these frogs, which is excellent. This is a really great beginner amphibian for anybody who's done their homework. And that's the case with anything that's a beginner animal. There's no animal that is easy if you're not prepared. That's why we have this channel to help you get prepared so you know what you're getting yourself into. But if you've done your homework, a white tree frog is as good as you can do. They're gonna need a fairly simple aquarium, but one that's going to hold humidity pretty well. It's kind of tricky to find a balance with a humid tank. The kind of tank you really need for just about any terrestrial amphibian. You need it to be humid so that the frog doesn't dry out, but you don't want it to get moldy in there. So you need the enclosure to not be saturated and soaking wet all the time. You also want to make sure that you use materials in that enclosure that aren't prone to molding because that can cause health problems for the amphibian. And on top of that, it'll destroy your, your tank, or at least the decorations inside, given time. You need a good lid on this enclosure. These guys can climb right up glass or pretty much any other surface. So if you don't have a good lid on there, they're gone. They're not going to push their way out like a snake might, but you definitely need something that fits well on the top of that enclosure. One big downside to these frogs, and a lot of frogs, is just that they're going to eat live feeders, which means you need a supply of live insect feeders. And of course, we have a video of five really great insects that you could actually raise yourself, so you don't necessarily need to be making trips to the pet store all the time. But it may be the case that you're buying them in smaller quantities. You need to go to the pet store on a regular basis. As we mentioned before, the enclosure needs to stay humid. And the best way to do this is to mist the enclosure regularly, either with a, a misting system or a spray bottle. So you are going to need to do that on a regular basis, especially if you go with the spray bottle, and that's kind of a daily chore. Not a big chore, but it is something you need to do every day, and that can be an issue if you go on vacation or something like that. This is a really important thing with amphibians across the board, which is 
Water quality is extremely important. That includes the water in their water bowls, the water that you use to mist them, and so you're going to need to dechlorinate and treat any water that you're using for these guys, always, because the chemicals in tap water, for example, can kill your frog. They probably would benefit from temperatures slightly higher than what you might have in your house, depending on the season and how hot your house gets. And this can easily be achieved by just having a heat mat on a thermostat. They're definitely going to need a water bowl, and you're going to need to make sure that water bowl has water in it, clean water at all times, and that that water has been treated, just like the water you use for your mister. They really do great in a, a planted bioactive enclosure. And uh, we actually have a full video on that if you want to see one way that you can do a planted bioactive enclosure. That tank would work very well for white's tree frogs. When it comes to hardiness, we give the white's tree frog a score of 4 out of 5. For the record, I just transferred this frog to my other hand just to shake things up because this frog isn't going anywhere. That's how easy they are to handle. In terms of hardiness, the white tree frog is just as solid as any amphibian could possibly be. They have a very long lifespan, uh, in excess of 10 years easily, sometimes over 20 years, which is just forever for a frog. That's really cool. The best ways to kill them would be to expose it to chemicals, like chlorine or chemicals on your hands, cleaning agents, uh, also extreme heat or freezing cold could kill your frog very quickly. Dehydration would be another way to kill it. If you're not keeping the humidity up and you're letting the entire enclosure dry out, the frog will dry out right along with everything else. There are also some pathogens, some diseases, that if your frog is exposed to them could lead to an early death. However, if you're doing a good job quarantining, especially other amphibians that might come into your collection, if you are not poisoning your frog, on accident or on purpose, and if you're providing the basic care for it, it should really, really do well. When it comes to availability, we give the White's Tree Frog a score of 4 out of 5. These are definitely one of the most available frog species, at least in the United States, and probably the most widely available captive bred frog in the United States. Because this is an Australian frog, and Australia does not export their wildlife, the white tree frogs that we have now in collections outside of Australia are all captive bred, and that's awesome. You can find these guys in pet stores, also in expos, uh, online, and, and, and this makes sense because frogs in general are very fecund. They produce a lot of babies, and that's because in the wild most of them get eaten, but in captivity, where all of them can survive, if you breed white's tree frogs, you're gonna make a lot of white's tree frogs. And we are pretty good at breeding these things, so they're everywhere, and that's awesome. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the white's tree frog a score of 4 out of 5. The frog itself is not the least expensive of frogs, but it's pretty inexpensive, especially for a captive bred frog. The enclosure that you use for them can also be relatively inexpensive. In fact, it can be very inexpensive, or it could be extravagant and beautiful. You can go either way. For your viewing pleasure, which is the main reason that you would have a frog, I would recommend a glass enclosure with a secure lid, because you don't want them to escape and you can do a really, really beautiful enclosure, like, like the one in our video. You may need to put some glass on a screen lid to reduce how much of the humidity inside of the tank is lost due to evaporation, but that will vary depending on what the humidity is like where you live. A plastic tub can also work just fine as far as the, the frog is concerned. It's just, it will be very difficult to view it and viewing tree frogs is the main reason you should keep tree frogs. They're really not a handling pet, even though they do very well with handling. In addition to that enclosure, you're going to need a water bowl. And that water bowl is going to be one that they're going to need to be able to get into and soak. You're going to need a misting bottle or a misting system to keep the humidity high. And I would recommend either using a, a water dechlorinator and treatment, which is a great way to go, or just buying purified water. Don't use distilled water though, that can actually kill them. So purified water, not distilled water, that's, that's very important. If you use any lights, you're only gonna need them to keep the plants alive. They don't need any sort of basking or UV lights. A heat mat and a thermostat might be a good idea though if your house gets cold. And then of course to keep humidity high, you're gonna need a substrate that won't mold and will hold humidity well. I like things like sphagnum moss, Eco-Earth could be very good underneath the sagtum moss. 
And we'll have links to all these things down in the description. And so for these reasons, we give the White's Tree Frog a score of 3.8 out of 5. Honestly, that's probably one of the better scores we will ever give to an amphibian. There are some drawbacks that are just sort of tied to the type of skin that amphibians have more than anything that are going to keep them from getting a, a super high score. You're not going to find any amphibians that are going to get a 5 out of 5. But the white tree frog is one of the best pet amphibians you could ever get. They are so cool, such amazing frogs, and they might just be the perfect pet amphibian for you. As always, like and subscribe. We're going to keep coming out with more videos on amphibians and, of course, more reptiles because this is Clint's Reptiles. And we hope to see you real soon. And thank you to all of our patrons at Patreon. Why is it called Dumpy? I don't know. That's funny. Some jerk. What are we going to talk about? They look like aliens. He does look like a good <laughs> If it is, a Sticky little alien. Because <laughs> <laughs> I threw it on the ground. <laughs> My dad's not a cell phone. <laughs>